Hey, it's British Cook. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going through how to make easy, no need, low yeast or no yeast bread. Check this out. In this video, I'll show you a really simple and fast and the easy way to make no need bread at home. Any of you can do it, I can absolutely promise you. Also, I'll be showing you how to make a quick little yeast starter. If you don't have any yeast at home, how you can make some bread without yeast. And on top of that, I'll be doing some of my top tips and some of my top tricks from my old video about bread. We bring them into 2020, trying to help you through a bit of lockdown. So if that all sounds good to you, please click the subscribe button. Please give this video a like, share it with your family, friends, post it on your Twitter. Also check me out on Instagram as well. Look for British Cook on Instagram. Really easy to find, so much stuff going on there. So let's get to making some bread. The ingredients for this loaf are so simple. There's 420 grams of plain flour there. You can use plain flour, bread flour, or even self-raising if you really want to. It will work with anything you've got in the cupboard. So yeast, this yeast actually went out of date in 2012. I'm going to show you a really quick tip at the end of the video on how to double check, see if your yeast is actually viable and will still work. A lot of the time when yeast goes out of date, if it's actually sealed in the container or in a packet and it's dry like this is, it'll actually work. So if you want to know if your out of date yeast is working or not, if you keep watching to the end of the video, I'll show you a quick way you can check to see if your out of date yeast is working. So the ingredients for this loaf are so simple. There's 420 grams of plain flour there. That's about three cups. Um, so you can use plain flour, you can use self-raising flour if you really want to. You can use bread flour, anything like that, it's no problem at all. So just quickly going through these ingredients, we've got a teaspoon of cast sugar. You can use any kind of sugar. Um, a good heat teaspoon of sugar helps the yeast an awful lot. We've got a tablespoon of table salt nice and fine so we can easily mix it in and with the sugar please don't worry if you haven't got caster sugar you can use any type of sugar you've got around it's just to help feed the yeast that's all then along here we've got two tablespoons of olive oil again you don't actually really need this you can make the bread without it it just makes it a bit crunchier around the top and on the base and then we've got our yeast this recipe only uses one teaspoon of yeast which is about a third of the seven gram packets most recipes that i see ask for seven grams which is Quite a lot of yeast. Um, if you can split a yeast packet into three loaves, why not do that? So that's what we're going to use. One heat teaspoon of this yeast. And if you remember what I said, I'm going to show you how to double check your yeast is active and working, even if it's out of date, at the end of the video. Now we are actually in the middle of a lockdown, so if you can't get yeast, here's a really top simple trick. If you have any kind of dried fruit, I've actually got dried mixed fruit there, which is sultanas, currants uh, and some candy peel. If you have any raisins, if you have any prunes, anything that's dried at all, all you need to do is about two, two tablespoons of that, sprinkle it with a tiny bit of sugar, pop it into a jar, pop that dried fruit and tiny bit of sugar into a jam jar. We're then going to put a little bit of water on top and then we're going to add some flour. We're going to keep it warm for about a day, two days maybe, and you'll see the reaction start to happen. So when you add the water to that, you'll see the water goes a kind of cloudy colour. That's actually the natural yeast and the sugars from the fruit. This is another way to do a sourdough starter without having to wait days and days. All we do then, once the flour is in there, is we keep it in a warm place, about 20 degrees or so, air in cupboard, nice warm room, and watch it bubble up. Once it starts doing that, you know you've got yourself a starter that you can use, and put about two tablespoons of that starter into this recipe. Of course, if you've got yeast, just use yeast. It's another way, if you've got no yeast, to make bread at home really easily with a little bit of sourdough starter. So within a few minutes of actually making that starter, you'll see it start to bubble up. That's carbon dioxide coming off the yeast. So just put a lid on that loosely and leave it somewhere warm for about a day or so, and you'll watch it rise up. Use about a tablespoon of that or so for your starter, for loaf, obviously leaving the raisins and bits bobs out. Okay, so hopefully some of you that don't have yeast will find that little tip quite useful. So back to making the bread, all we're going to do is we're going to put the sugar in there. We're going to put the salt in there. And once the sugar and salt are in there, we're going to pour that olive oil in there. And don't forget to add your teaspoon of yeast. We're going to stir all that together now. And I'm going to use the end of a fork because I'm a little bit unconventional and because I saw someone else doing a YouTube video and it's always worked really well for me for this recipe. Give it a stir with the end of a fork. See, you don't even need a spoon for this recipe. How cool is that? 
So this is actually really quite an unusual recipe because I actually use quite hot water for this recipe. If you follow my instructions on the water, this will work so well. Just trust me, it's quite a lot hotter than hand hot water. It's quite hot, but listen to this a second. So for this fantastic no need bread recipe, it's actually really important you get the water right. The water needs to be really quite hot. So we're using 125 mils of boiling water, just come off the boil, add 250 millimeters of cold water to that. Make a little well in here, pour your water in. So when Mr. Fork comes back in, use a fork and stir it around. You'll get a kind of straggly, quite a thick, sticky dough from this. Um, this is the easiest, quickest way to do it. Say it's washing up, say it's using a machine. It's just so easy, anyone could do it. And using the end of a fork is a fantastic way to just get it done. Let me show you my next top tip, how to make bread without making a mess. Okay, so this is my next top tip. For a really quick clean up, use some cling film. I'm going to put some cling film down on whichever surface you're going to use. When it comes to clean up time, it's so simple, so easy, and so quick. All we're going to do now is take this out, fold it over a couple of times, look at how lovely that dough already looks. I'm going to get that dough and just pop it onto the sheet there. Literally, just pull it out, fold it over. Pull it out, fold it over. And literally, really roughly do this a couple of times. Pull it out, fold it over. Pull it out, fold it over. And that pretty much is going to be it. So grab that dough, pop it in a bowl with some baking paper in it. It'll be really useful in a minute. Pull that around. I'm going to put that somewhere warm to prove for about an hour or so. It's going to expand quite a lot. Somewhere warm, conservatory, air and cupboard, anywhere like that. Pop it in there. Let it rise for about an hour, maybe about an hour and a half. Just before you pop it in to prove, remember to cover it up with cling film. So that's risen beautifully. Um, it's been proven for about an hour or so. It's going to get a lot bigger when we put it in the oven. But look at those sort of air bubbles you see underneath the surface there, still rising. It's going to be a really, really nice loaf of bread. So easy as well. Keep watching. Okay, so that's back onto the cling film. Just going to grab it and fold it. I'm going to do that three or four times. And that will be absolutely fine. Pop it back in a bowl for about 25, 30 minutes. Then we're going to chuck it in the oven. Don't forget, you must have your oven preheated at the moment. In fact, I'm going to show you what you need to do with that next. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a really quick and easy way just to clean up. A little bit of flour might have gone through there, but look at that. Let me just quickly tell you, I've also got a video on how to make your own clotted cream at home. It's really simple and really easy. There's a link to that coming up right now. And also I've got a, a video on how to make your own butter at home. Really simple, really easy. Just need a little bit of cream and a bit of time. So that's coming up now as well. And there's also going to be a link to my homemade jam. So if you've got one, grab yourself any kind of metal pot that can go in the oven, a ovenware piece or anything you can use in the oven and pop a lid on. It must be oven safe. Um, if you don't have anything oven safe, you can also use a bread tin. It will work in a slightly different way. Uh, but let me show you how we can make this go up really quickly. So as soon as you put that into proof, put in to your oven the dish you're going to use at 250 degrees. Or 235 if you can't get 250 or whatever the top temperature of your oven is we're going to put this pan in for at least 20 30 minutes while that dough rises for the second time and get this absolutely scorching hot this is what's going to make it a super loaf okay so preheat the metal pan that's absolutely scorching hot just got it out of the oven and just drop your dough which is in the baking paper straight inside it i'm going to put the lid back on this and put it in there for half an hour Okay, so I've just taken it out of the oven after half an hour. As you can see, it's quite nicely cooked. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the pan. I'm going to take that wrapping off it. And I'm going to chuck it back in that scorching hot oven for about 15 minutes. And make this a really crispy, nice, delicious loaf. Obviously, you can see now why I use baking paper. Just lift it out of that. Unwrap that. And chuck it straight back in the oven. Tell me that isn't a thing of beauty. Huge. And you can have your own, it's really, really easy, really simple. Just make sure you use that hot water. Okay, so I'm going to cut this quickly before I should. I just want you to hear the crunch. Listen to that. And this was made with a third of the yeast that you normally use for a loaf. Lovely, crunchy, fluffy and light. Get that one open. It's not our sand bread, but it's definitely fresh, beautiful, delicious bread. Give this recipe a try. Speak to you all soon, British Cook. Okay, if you watched the video so far, thank you so much for watching it. Think about subscribing, maybe giving a like, sharing with your friends. I'm going to show you now how to double check whether any yeast that you've got that may be out of date 
is actually still working. It's really simple. Grab a teaspoonful of yeast. Remember this yeast is from 2012. Put it into a glass half full of warm water. Give it a quick stir. And you can actually use this in your bread if it turns out to work. Add in a good teaspoonful of sugar. Give it a stir. If it starts fizzing, then we know we've got a viable yeast that we can use in our bread or any other baking. How cool is that? Give it a go. See how it turns out. So if you're thinking about throwing away yeast that's out of date, first of all, try this little trick. See how it does? That's so cool, isn't it? See you later, British cook. As I said, this yeast went out of date eight years ago. So make sure, do what I say, check yeast before you throw it away.